the primaries went, I guess, really as expected. It's over. Uh, other than Vermont, you saw a, a sweep by Donald Trump. He did lose Vermont, though, interesting enough, uh, to Nikki Haley. Vermont, actually. Ne- well, there you go. Never won Vermont, but uh, won a lot of states. So, obviously, you had Alabama, Alaska, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Maine, Massachusetts, Minnesota, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Virginia, and then losing Vermont. Uh, most of them by very, very significant I mean, you're looking at um, Virginia, he won 63. I mean, the they thought Virginia was, was going to be close. Yeah, they that thought he won. Virginia was going to be close, and it wasn't. It was 63-35. Utah, which, again, they thought would be close. It wasn't 57-40. Tennessee, 77 for Trump, uh, 20 for Haley. Trump, 82 in Oklahoma, 16 for Haley. On and on it goes. Here's I'm the curious, bottom line. I'm curious voter turnout, too, in some of these states. I'd be interested in finding out some of those numbers because – uh, here locally, it did not seem like there was really any no, buzz. I walked right into the voting base. I walked in and out. Uh, you know, some of the people here, not, call, the not voting... calling out the crew, but some of y'all may have said, man, not worth it. Uh, didn't make it to the polls. Something so, in the voting, though, situation in our state, I don't like. Can I be blunt? Okay. You go in and you verbally say to them whether you want a Republican or Democratic ballot. Yeah. See, you were down the street from me. I had to point at a picture like, uh, you know. A PBS special. I was like, all right, point here. The, we, the way they used to do it was they'd have Republican ballots and, and Democratic ballots, and you just picked up one. Yeah. Well, that, they don't uh, do that anymore. There's a lot going on. Again, I felt I, I like, I felt like, like my ballot was read by the person feeding it into the machine. It was odd, but it was what it is. It is what it is, but it was fine. So Nikki Haley has now officially suspended her campaign, which yeah, means— Yeah, that's the big news, yeah, really. She's not running. So the general election has now started. It people, is Trump versus Biden. I do want to clarify because people always talk about the the suspended language. Yeah, a lot of that is because they got accounting to do. They have things they got to wrap up. There's money still floating around. There's people on staff. So suspending really just means we have to. We're you, done working, but we do have to wind down the business essentially. Yesterday this. we knew that Nikki Haley had no events scheduled past yesterday. Yeah, and I think it was told no ads by to the to members of the press. I believe the Washington Post was told late last night to embargo it, but at six a.m. they can announce it. Yeah, and she did not make an announcement last night. So no. they, everybody that has run, Tim Scott, Mark, Mark, um, excuse me, it's Tim Scott, uh, Ron DeSantis, and the others have all suspended their campaigns. So technically, the campaigns are operating, and they're doing what you said, Logan, is the administrative cleanup on all of this. But what you do now have now, which is you know really unheard of in our lifetime, is you've got an eight month presidential cycle. Yeah. Uh, for the general election. And normally it's from, you know, July, August through November, really August, yeah, yeah. Four, September, months, October, yeah. Yeah. and then vote in November. Here it's it's going to be eight months of this. Yeah. And you're seeing the uh, the Biden campaign really start ramping up. They're specific, they've been specifically targeting President Trump for most of the time, but now you're seeing that uh, that happening right now. I just got an ad from President Biden on our YouTube video. So, you know, that's that's how how active they are to try to siphon off. And you saw that. Yep. President Biden said this morning, there may be a place for you, Nikki Haley voters, as a Biden supporter. You may not be a Trump supporter. And uh, we should probably listen to Nikki Haley, Bite 24. She specifically kind of discussed you know, where she's currently at. Yep. I have always been a conservative Republican and always supported the Republican nominee. But on this question, as she did on so many others, Margaret Thatcher provided some good advice when she said, quote, never just follow the crowd. Always make up your own mind. So always make your mind. A bit of uh, Ted Cruz flashbacks of uh, a vote your conscience. That's sort of how it feels like a, I'm not going to tell you. Now, of course, Ted Cruz maybe fell in line, maybe more than anyone. Uh, but when it comes to Nikki Haley, certainly not. And look, it got very personal towards the end there uh, with President Trump. So maybe a little harder pivot than it would be for a Ron DeSantis, who which really was just a... Uh, you know, kind of policy issues. They weren't getting as personal, ag- aggressive. Yeah. Uh, so it, it could take some time. Here's what you, what, the interesting part of this is people are, and I think there's two things to be looking at right now politically. You have in the Democratic side, they're very concerned about the RFKs, the Marion Williamsons, and um, and the Cornell West because you start peeling off three, four, five percent yeah, in a given you state. Yeah, actually looked at some of these, some of them, they were di- double oh, digits. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Williamson did double digits in some. So you got that issue. And on the Republican side, you've got the issue of will the Nikki Haley voter come back to the fold, so to speak, and endorse Trump? They were adamantly against Donald Trump running. And if you look at the states that she, you know, just look at the numbers, while he won the 
you know, the primaries easily, she was getting generally around 20 percent of the vote. Now, do I think most of those people are still going to vote Republican? Yes, if they vote. Yeah. So there does need to be a little bit of healing of the party, and that's part of the process here. Yeah, can they can they get it in themselves to go vote for Donald Trump? They well, the, vote for Biden. Nikki Haley has not yet endorsed Donald Trump. Right. She used the Margaret Thatcher quote: "Is vote, vote your feel you know go with your conscience." So I don't think that has been. Make up your own um, mind, yeah. I don't think that's been adjudicated yet. So I think we're going to have to watch that. I think the president, former president, needs to work on that to get everybody together. Is his speech was very forward-looking yesterday. I don't think he even mentioned Nikki Haley's name one time. Um, and in her speech today, she mentioned Donald Trump, and, and I'll, I'll play what she said. Uh, let's go ahead and play the statement she made about congratulating Donald Trump. I think that is worth playing. I think that's bite number four. In all likelihood, Donald Trump will be the Republican nominee when our party convention meets in July. I congratulate him and wish him well. I wish anyone well who would be America's president. Our country is too precious to let our differences divide us. I, I got to tell you this. I thought Nikki Haley was a, a really good U.N. ambassador, and I thought she was a, did a really good job as the governor of South Carolina. Here was her problem on this one. You were running against Donald Trump. Yeah, I think until the last six months, I don't think anyone really had that negative of a feeling towards Nikki Haley. But she Haley. decided to go with decisively negative imaging on Trump. I mean, she, she yeah. decided to go after the... She was the one who created, and I think it stuck a little bit, this wherever he goes, he creates chaos. Yeah, I think you're right, and and that majorly seems to have backfired. And with that, it is that question, because she did come, everyone else has kind of come out of this, they've endorsed President Trump, and they kind of could move on with their career, their life. This one will be tougher, because it did, she overstayed her welcome. Yes. And I like Nikki Haley, she's been on this broadcast many times, she's been on many of our documentaries, uh, uh, you know, yeah. I'm always been good to us so you know i'm not the one person sitting there throwing stones because you disagree with someone on who you voted for or who you're not she's been good to us uh and her family serves our country so i uh, i have massive respect but i do think you have to look towards the future and where does nikki haley go from here she already said i'm going to be a private citizen that to me says you know i'm wrapping up this kind of career maybe i'll get a contributorship on one of the news networks maybe i'll show up somewhere else uh, because if you've been in her career trajectory, the next stop was the presidency. That doesn't seem to go your way. So now you have to kind of figure out what to do with the rest of your life. Um, so obviously, it's also politics. Yeah, politics bring strange bedfellows, and those strange bedfellows could include Nikki Haley with a position in the administration, one hundred percent, at a at a very senior level. So don't let any. That's why it's politics, folks. You, you can't get too don't. wrapped up in it because that's kind of the way. This all plays out at the end of the day. So I think in the next 24 hours, you'll see some. Let's go ahead and take Mario's call out of Virginia. Yeah, Mario, Virginia, you're on the air. Well, I had a question. We're, and, and with a little sarcasm, I would say this is round two. Yeah. So do we wipe the slate clean? But I doubt if it's going to wipe the slate clean, considering the fact that everyone remembers the last election. So how are we going to do this this time? You know, it's interesting to say wipe the slate clean. I think the biggest criticism of both of these candidates is going to be you got to be, they're not forward looking enough. Policies that you're going to implement, things to change, not gr not vengeance and, and grieving. Uh, it's got to be forward-looking policies. I saw one of the D uh, DNC commentators yesterday saying, you know, Biden's got to get to where he's putting out plans, not just I don't like Trump and he's the threat to democracy. So it's going to. I think it's going to be a policy election. It also, I think, is going to be very close. The country is very divided. So it's going to be who gets their candidates out. Yeah, it's going to, at the end of the day, it's going to be a couple percentage one way or the other. Absolutely. Most. So we're not talking about these big sweeping victories like we used to have, uh, even in an Obama era. You know, we're not we're not talking about that anymore. No. Uh, you're more talking about a George W. Bush second turn coming out of 55 percent, 52 percent. Yes. Now it's it's even like sometimes less than that because of these third parties that could throw a whole you know ridge into it. We really have, watch that. If you have an RFK, go at it and and be there. There are a lot of people. They're just going to see him on the ballot and are going to vote for him. I mean, if it's 10 percent, that that's what I'm saying. It could be a big chunk of people that just walk in and go. I don't even think he'll win, but defiantly, I don't want these two people that we've had already uh, once again. I think there's going to be a large percentage of people. I would not be shocked if a large percentage of people do that. If they can't figure out a way to win over RFK uh, and he continues his <laughs> presidency and he makes the ballot yeah. in all these states, I know a lot of people that will walk in and make that decision. Mike, I want to turn to politics a little bit. We don't do a lot of that with you on here, but I, I think obviously the GOP primary is now effectively over with. So what should the focus be um, for the former president, uh, 
your former colleague when you were serving in office as well, as he eyes the general election now? What should he be focusing on? He should articulate his vision for America for the four years that he will be the president of the United States. He should articulate why that matters to every American, whether you're working at, as an accountant in Milwaukee or you're working as a young FBI officer in L.A., whatever whatever your walk of life, your student, wherever you find yourself, whatever gender, whatever race, why America is better off with President Trump as opposed to four more years of President Biden. And, you know, Jay, he can do that in the context of demonstrated demonstrated history. He, we, we know the things that happened during the four years he was there. You can stare at them. They are factual. They are indisputable. And if he if he uses this forward look, and I think President Trump is already beginning to see, he talks about these things that that will be better for every American, will be more secure, our border will be sovereign again. If he talks about those things and then says, oh, by the way, these aren't a pipe dream. These aren't a wish list. This is not just a policy proposal. I have proven that I can achieve that. I think you will see an enormous amount of Americans give us a tidal wave victory in just now. Goodness, what are we now? Nine months off. It's going to be the longest uh, general election of our lifetime, that's for sure. Let me ask you this. You know, you're looking back at your run at the CIA, also, of course, as Secretary of State and so so heavily involved in the administration, what would you say if you were going to focus on two or three major victory points that the president could point to and then build off of for the future? I mean, I think of the Abraham Accords as one, but I'm sure there's others. What would those be that he could say, look, I've done this with my team. I am now going to do this going forward. So I think the Abraham Accords is a good place to start because they are the, the follow on from the destruction of ISIS. It seems like a long time ago. But when we came into office, the ISIS folks were cutting people's heads off in the Middle East on the beaches. Right. Um, we pushed back. We built out peace and prosperity in the region. And there were no wars in the Middle East. Uh, we can certainly talk about that in Europe as well. We made NATO stronger and better. Uh, there were no wars in Europe. And then finally, a deep national security issue is at our southern border. It often gets talked about as a domestic political matter because it's certainly that too. But Jay, you've seen this, right? Uh, not only is it a crime problem, but we've now got thousands of Chinese nationals coming across our border. Who knows what that's setting the seeds for in the years ahead? Uh, we've got to get that back under control. And he's proven that it is possible to do. It is not a dream. It's not a fantasy. It's not about some fictional idea. It's about the reality of using America's power to keep Americans safe. Um, you know, we had North Korea in a better spot. We had the Chinese in a better spot. Those are five tangible places where if you go... You know, like your op optometrist, Jay, yep. better here or here. Yeah, I this think one or this one, <laughs> right? Unmistakably, we were better with President Trump than we are today under President Biden. You know, I, I think about your tenure and I, I hope that uh, going forward that you, 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 if you so desire, play a key role in the administration because you were such a valuable asset to the United States. The question that I think is on everybody's mind after yesterday, and Nikki Haley made her concession speech if you want to call it that it was her you know i'm suspending my campaign she did not endorse the president yet but i, I suspect that's coming but it was we've got to you know the party needs to build back do you think that you know you, you and i both know this former president very well reaching out to people that he's opposed to he did it before but people like nikki haley that were running against him hard at the end um how important do you think it is to unify that 20 percent of the votes she was getting in the primaries. Yeah, Jay, look, we all can do math, right? Right. It's incredibly important that those folks realize uh, that President Trump is the right leader for the future. That, in that includes Ambassador Haley herself, but more importantly, uh, the folks who, uh, for one reason or another, decided that they preferred her to him in a primary battle. Uh, now that that's behind us, uh, we, we all have to just recognize that whatever there may be, and I, I campaigned too when I was in Congress, there can be hard feelings uh, it, it is time for us all to recognize that we have to do the right thing for America, and that is to support President Trump uh, come this November. You know, I, I saw this morning, I think he put it up on Truth. Um, he talked about the folks who'd supported Ambassador Haley coming to join, that he invited them in. I'm, I'm glad that he has done that. Uh, and I'm convinced that only will he continue to invite them in, um, but logic will prevail as well. They will see that this is a better solution and we uh, we often in life find that we don't get our first choice in everything, Jay. Right. We we should we we shouldn't for a moment think that because of that we should uh, do something that is uh, uh, not in our best interest. And I think the best interest for every Republican, and I think large swaths of them will come to see this, is President Trump as opposed to another four years of President Biden.